Hey guys, EBP Man here. Now, if you're an experienced user of 3D printers, you know that one factor in improving the quality of your prints is slowing down the print speed. So many of us are gonna be running our prints anywhere from 30 to 50 millimeters per second. The slower, the better. But today, I'm gonna to talk about a printer that is fast. We're talking about super fast, 250 millimeters per second fast. And despite the high speeds, this thing prints fantastic prints. We're talking about the Ender 7. This is a high speed 3D printer that, you know what, you just have to see the prints. Uh, for example, this guy here, 250 millimeters a second, not completely cleaned up, but this was printed in 42 hours. Check this out. This in just under 10. Let's go ahead and check out the Ender 7. Now, I've been running prints on the Ender 7 for a month now, and I have to say that I've been completely blown away with the speed of this printer. And I found very few defects using stock settings and, again, the standard slicer, uh, which is a Cura version of the slicer, but specifically designed for the Ender 7. Now, one of the things that's really important for me as I've been reviewing printers is to make sure that, you know, I can use this printer soon as I put it together. So it took me just a few minutes to put together and then I like just being able to level and print. Really important not to have to spend a lot of time, sometimes I've spent days tweaking Cura settings or Prusa Slicer settings or Idea Maker settings to try to get the best prints. This printer works. Uh, you're able to put it together really quickly, you're able to level it fast, and then you're able to print super fast. Now, the Ender 7 has been built for speed. We're talking about high speed printing at 250 millimeters per second. And it is super precise thanks to its linear rail that reduces the movement that uh, normal printers encounter that sometimes leads to defects or causes them to go slower. For example, uh, this is the Sermon 50 millimeters per second print that we just did recently in the review. This is coming from the Ender 7 at 250 millimeters per second. Take a look at this. We're gonna look at the quality in a couple seconds. Now, the other feature that the printer has, it has a core XY structure with dual motors that's gonna give you fast prints and great quality too. It also has a custom high volume nozzle and this is a special nozzle to be able to support these high speeds because it's gonna run a little bit hotter and it's gonna run a little bit uh, faster. So you're also looking that it has a high volume heating block that has also been increased to be able to support better uh, flow rates. Uh, one of the things I'll just highlight is typically I print my PLA at around 200, maybe 205 Celsius. Uh, as we've been printing with the same PLA and even some lesser brands, we've been printing at 220 Celsius. Uh, you have to print it hotter in order to be able to support the speed, the speed that we're talking about. Also, we have a um, custom high power motors. So one of the things that we'll also look at is the overall, I would say, noise generated by this printer. This is a silent printer, but it is a little bit noisier than some of our others. And when I say noisy, uh, I'm still looking at whisper quiet to a little bit higher than whisper quiet. It also has high speed cooling fans, right? And also the overall, I would say, logic, the programming is uh, more efficient. It's just everything has been built for speed. Um, I also like the aesthetic design. And for those of you who are curious about the print size of the bed, you're looking at 250 by 250 by 300 millimeters, which is fantastic. Uh, you saw the helmet that I, I printed, that fits me and I was able to print it on this without a lot of adjustment. Now the hot bed can heat up to around 100 Celsius and the print nozzle can get pretty hot too. We're talking about 260 Celsius. Now the glass bed is that fourth generation glass that makes prints come off really easy and has that really nice shiny bottom that we mentioned. From a print material, you have a lot of flexibility there too. You're talking about PLA, ABS, PTG. And then from a loading perspective, you can load all your prints uh, using a micro SD, but it also has a USB-C port. Now accessing the control to your Ender 7 is all done through this touch screen that gives you really easy access to everything that you have to do when it comes to printing. And we're gonna get into it as we visit the printer and take a closer look. But first, one of the things I wanted to do is share some of the prints. And we're gonna first start with some of the stock prints that were on the SD card that was included. Now there are two basic prints that were found on the SD card. Um, so here we have this one right here. And again, this was printed at 250 millimeters per second. Everything was done. Matter of fact, I haven't slowed 
any of my prints down, even for testing, because I said, why not? If I can print fast, I'm gonna go fast. And you can see here, uh, the overall print quality was really good. This is an actual, uh, the filament itself is uh, from GTS 3D. It is an inexpensive filament, um, not in the high end at all, but as you can see, the overall quality looks uh, really good. Uh, the other print that was there is this Rabbit. And again, 250 millimeters a second, and just look at the overall quality here. Um, I saw a small little defect here, right? But overall, if you think about this, no supports uh, or anything, really, really nice uh, print quality. Uh, you'll notice the bottom. Uh, here I had some leveling that I needed to adjust, uh, which I already have, but you'll notice that shiny bottom that we talked about um, in our previous videos. One of the things I love about that glass material. Now what we did was, after printing those two items, I wanted to see what it would be like uh, to actually do my own slicing, right, using the Creality software, uh, the Cura version that was provided. And what we did is we printed this guy right here. So as you can see this, uh, this was again printed, same speed, nothing has changed. And what I'd like you to look at is the overall top here. If we look at the top, and I'm gonna see if I can bring it a little bit closer so that you guys can see that. We'll make sure that that's in focus. Uh, look at how clean that top was. That's, that's pretty good. And then we're gonna flip it to the side right here so you can see the overall, again, no stringing, nothing going on there. It's good. Look at the bottom now. Look how clean that bottom is. Oh my God, I just love it, right? So we said, hey, that was a good test. Let's do some more testing. Now at 250, we printed this owl. So as you take a look at both of these models, I have to say, there's some light stringing here that I can clean up. And again, keep in mind that I haven't touched any of the settings. I have done anything to it. But just looking at the overall quality, I'm just gonna turn them over for a second so you can take a look at this right here. So take a look at the backs. Look how clean that is. Look at the tops. Now I've dropped this one, so it has a little damage there. That the overall quality of the shoulders, look at the wings, the detail on the wings, right? Look on the sides. We're talking about 250 millimeters a second, 50 millimeters a second. That's a significant time savings. Yet the quality is absolutely spot on. Take a look at that. I'm telling you, it's a great printer. Now the next thing we wanted to do was print something a little bit larger. So we went ahead and we printed a vase and we printed this vase. And this vase again was printed at the same space. Now the next thing we took a look at was printing this vase, right? And we printed this at the same speed. Uh, and you'll notice, again, this is using the same uh, filament. Overall quality, we'll rotate this a little bit so you can see uh, the overall quality here is great, right? You can notice at the very bottom, again, that finish is nice. Uh, no stringing in the inside, no stringing anywhere. Now, the last thing that we printed on the channel was this uh, face mask or helmet. And I still have some cleaning to do, but this was a helmet that was printed at 250 millimeters per second again. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a closer look at the printer. Let's go check it out. We'll see this print and a few more. Now we've been running the Ender 7 nonstop for three weeks. And I wanna show you our last print as well as go over some of the things that I really like about this printer. Now, so first of all, the filament is loaded here on the side and we are using a very inexpensive uh, filament. Uh, we're using this filament right here. This is this GSTD 3D. Uh, very inexpensive uh, filament uh, for our test prints. And everything that we've been running on this printer has been at the top speed, 250 millimeters per second, and with the standard slicer settings. One of the things that's really important to me is that you can get a printer, open it up, put it together, and then just use its stock. Now, the prints can be improved, obviously, with uh, different settings that you can uh, change inside of the Cura slicer, but I wanted to see how uh, how fast can you get going and what kind of quality prints you can get. So you'll notice again that the filament loader or the spool goes here on the side. Uh, your sensor, uh, here's your Bowden tube and your loader here. You do have a fan here which keeps this uh, entire mechanism cool, but at the same time it keeps it dust free. I was noticing that and if you've been using a 3D printer or you're new to 3D printing, one of the things that will happen is uh, this area here will tend to get a lot of dust just because it's loading the filament and the filament is plastic and it's gears, right? But what I've noticed is that this has remained pretty clean. And I believe it's done that because of the fan that's here, not only cooling uh, this little motor that's here, but it's also um, just keeping this from getting any kind of debris uh, or dust stuck there. Now everything gets loaded through this Bowden tube all the way to the top. 
Now your filament does get loaded all the way through this Bowden tube uh, to the print head that's over here. And there are a few fans here that are keeping everything um, nice and cool. You are gonna be running your filament if you're looking to print at the highest speeds, uh, typically at 220. Uh, and that's what I've noticed. So typically when I run filament for other printers, it's maybe 200, 205, maybe 210, but never as hot as I've ran it here. So this one requires it to be a little bit hotter uh, for the speed that you get. Now, again, this is a Core XY printer, and we've talked a lot about it, but what I'll say is that the overall quality at the highest speed has been pretty stupendous. I wanna show you some of the uh, prints that we have here. So here's a print that we ran on this printer, uh, full speed, and this is an inexpensive filament, right? So this isn't um, high-end stuff in any way. And you can see how clean this print is. This vase is really nice. It printed, again, 250 millimeters per second, uh, and uh, very little to no stringing, and also no defects. Uh, the first layer came out really nice, and you can see what that first layer looks like. And then the other thing that we printed, and this was around 10 hours or less, I don't remember exactly, but we printed this guy right here. So this is a Fano that we printed. And again, no supports, printed really quick, very inexpensive filament. So when you look at the sides and it looks like there's some you know, layering, there was no real layer shifts going on. It's just that the filament looks this way. But as we get a little bit closer, you can see really nice quality, and again, at the fastest speed. Now, another thing I wanted to share with you is one of the last prints that we just ran on this printer. And this was a 42-hour print. And I want you to think about 42 hours compared to your printer with the amount of support material that this has. And again, look at this quality. So I just want to show you the side here. And then we'll rotate it so you can see what this looks like. All right, it hasn't been cleaned, just finished printing. And you can see how great this is. This is at 200 millimeters per second, stock settings, no tweaking. Now, an area that I've seen a lot of defects is not on this side at all. It's actually at the top. So let me show you. This was a little disappointing to me. So notice right here, we started seeing some defects. And then also, I was not thrilled about how this turned out right here uh, and also right here. But if you take a look at the sides and you take a look at the front, this is pretty cool, right? Look how clean that is. And again, this was 42 hours. So think about your printer at 50 millimeters per second or even 100 millimeters per second. What could you expect from something like that at you know, that speed? So now the question is, would I recommend the Ender 7 as a printer? Absolutely. If you're looking for something that's going to print fast and it's going to print quality, and again, that you're going to be able to tweak and even get better prints than what I'm getting, I would highly recommend this printer. We have had very little, if any, defect problems with this printer. Matter of fact, I can't really think about any kind of print failures that we've had where we've lost a full print. Yes, you, we've seen some defects now and then, you know, when it comes to some of the prints that we've had, but again, we're printing at the fastest speed. I frankly haven't sped this printer down at all. Haven't run anything at 50, haven't run anything at 100, because why would you when you can go 250? So guys, that wraps up our review of the high-speed Ender 7 printer. Again, if you're looking to print high-quality prints, at a fraction of the time, you can't go wrong with the Ender 7. Check it out.